Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I have two geometry projects to share with you that would work well for any math unit or for Pi Day. In a previous video I showed how to make this 12 division of a circle and today we're going to do it again but we are going to be using our distress inks as watercolors in order to color this in. I just have a non-porous surface here that I am just squishing these ink pads onto and then you can use them as watercolors. They are meant for scrapbooking and other art mediums but I think they work really well for some of our homeschool projects. Alright, so I've got some resist medium on my design and that's going to allow me to add this watercolor and it's not going to bleed through into these other sections. I'm going to start out with various yellow colors in the very center. I've got about two or three that I'm mixing together. And then with the next row of colors, I am doing a little bit of yellow with orange and maybe just a tiny bit of red. And then as I radiate out, I'm going to just keep going in rainbow order with these reds, purples, plums, all the way to blues and finally greens. I really like the way this one turned out. I really like using distress inks in our homeschool and other art projects. I think they have a really nice range of colors. The last thing I did was I added a little bit of shimmer shine to it and it just adds a nice little detail to it. I used Mr. Huey's shine. The last thing you want to do is just remove the resist medium or you could leave it in if you want to accentuate the design a little bit more. All right, for this next project, I'm gonna to go to my Silhouette Cameo and I'm going to do the same design, the 12 division of a circle, but I'm going to do this in this program instead. So I'm going to be making it a little bit different. It's gonna look the same in the end, but the construction of it's going to be different than if you are using a compass and a pencil. The first thing I'm going to do is just make my circle about five and three quarter inches and I'm going to position it right in the center of the page. I'm going to be cutting this out on 12 by 12 inch paper. Next, I want to add all of those circles which are going to divide that original circle. So because I am not using my compass, it's a little bit more challenging to figure out where they go. So to help me construct this geometric figure, I've added the grid background so I can help position these different circles. Now you can see the first three circles were constructed by using the original circle as a guide. Now the next three circles, I am freehanding them, and I'm going to have to freehand the next six circles as well. So as I zoom in, you can see that it wasn't perfectly aligned with the center, so I'm going to clean that up now before I add the rest of those circles, because you're going to need 12 all together. So because I've done this with a compass and a pencil before, I kind of know where they're supposed to go. Now I've removed the grid because it started to get a little bit too congested. It was hard to see everything. The last thing you want to do is remove the original circle. And next we are going to use one of these tools here to divide up the entire design into pieces. And that way you could cut out each of those pieces with kite paper or regular paper. The other thing I'm going to do is blend all of these designs together so you only just get the outside design. And I'm going to cut that out on contact paper and you're gonna see how that's going to help with the design later on. So the next thing I need to do is check the length of my blade. It's set to 10 right now. I'm gonna take that all the way back down to one or two. Now I try this out by cutting the kite paper, but it doesn't work, so then I decide to try something different and go back to the original design, which is just the 12 circles. And I'm going to cut this out on adhesive back card stock, and I'm going to use that as a template so that I can cut out my design on kite paper. So, so much for being able to cut it out on kite paper, but Later on, I discover a way that I can actually do it, and that's basically by cutting out the 12 large circles onto kite paper rather than each individual design. So, so much for my work. But now that we have our adhesive back template, we can take those individual pieces and stick it directly onto our kite paper, and we can cut out our kite paper without our template shifting around. Now this posed to be a little bit difficult because removing that thin kite paper off the adhesive back Cardstock actually wasn't that easy. So more mistakes than successes, but we're gonna keep 
going through this. Next, I cut out the perimeter of our design on contact paper, and we remove the backing so that the sticky side is facing up on our cutting mat. Next, we cut out each individual piece using our template, and then we could stick down our kite paper right directly onto our contact paper. Now we decided to use kite paper and contact paper because we want to hang this in the window and we want the light to shine through it. It's going to make a very beautiful geometric design, kind of resembling stained glass. However, it was a very lengthy project, so when this one is done, we want to think of a way to do the same project but not have it take so long. So now that the project is done, we just want to remove our contact paper and you can see that our template cut all the way through so it's really easy to remove this part and now you can see that all of our kite paper is adhered to that contact paper so it's on one sheet. I just need to pull this right off of our mat and now the big reveal, we can hang it in the window and you can see that beautiful sunlight coming through. It's really beautiful. So I did miss one of those little interior pieces that just popped off, so I went ahead and put it on afterwards, a little yellow piece. All right, so now it's time to try a different method. So I'm, do I'm just going to cut four circles on each mat. These are going to be the same size circles, five and three quarter inches, which is perfect because our kite paper is six inches wide. And I am going to go ahead and cut out the same template on contact paper. I'm going to remove the backing and we're going to use the template as a design guide. And of course, we're going to have our contact paper so that we can adhere down our circles. So this one went about so much faster and so much easier. And now that it's done, we can just remove our contact paper from the mat. And you can see the two designs side by side, and then you can choose which one you like better. All right, so if you want to see some more activities to celebrate Pi Day, you can tap on the screen right now. And if you want to see some of our other geometry projects, you can also tap on the screen right now. I've left a really large playlist for you. And of course, if you want to see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.